When I started here 12 years ago, there were maybe 29 wineries in the state of Ohio. And in the last 12 years, we're up to 104 as of this summer. Uh, I believe I was told we'll have 110 by the end of the summer. So the industry has grown tremendously. Uh, the amount of acreage planted has grown, uh, the size and scope of the wineries, and, and the, the national and international recognition of the industry has grown tremendously as well. Andy and Deanna Troutman's own vineyards have also grown tremendously. They started their first vineyard near Worcester about 10 years ago, and a few years later purchased another vineyard where Andy had been working near Akron. Things just kind of fell into place, uh, and uh, you know we're at the right, right place at the right time, really. For me, the winemaking business started when I was about 10. Uh, I actually took grape growing as a 4-H project uh, when I was a little boy. I latched onto that project. It really became a hobby and something I was very interested in all through grade school and high school. Uh, and then I went off to Ohio State. Uh, they don't have a, a viticulture degree, but you know every project I ever did was, you know, how do you grow a better grape, or how do you operate a wine business, or you know some sort of agribusiness. I really sort of tailored, you know, my education to you know what I wanted to do. I, I was one of those lucky few who knew early on what I really, you know, sort of had a passion for. So that's that's really how I got, you know, headed down this path. Being as stubborn as I am, uh, I knew I wanted to have my own operation. I knew I wanted to be independent. And traveling to California, I quickly realized that the cost of land and the cost of building and marketing an operation out there is, is pretty daunting. It would be very difficult for me, uh, just out of school, you know, young person, to, to really start my own operation. So uh, I began to focus on the Midwest, and then, you know, hey, I was from Ohio. I had family that, that had been farming, you know, and other commodities for generations. So, you know, really thought the opportunity was here. The industry was poised to grow uh, very quickly. So, you know, I kind of put it all together and decided that this is where we wanted to be. And there have been lots of surprises in the years since Andy started his operation. I learn something new every day. And I think that's part of the challenge of growing grapes in Ohio. Part of the challenge of making wine in Ohio is the weather changes constantly. There is never a year that's the same as a year prior to that. Every year is different. We're always learning something new. I've been growing grapes for 25 years and I still learn a new trick or there's a new problem every day. And that's really part of the excitement and frustration of what we do. I think the biggest surprise for me over the last 10 years is that there are varieties that we can grow here. Uh, a lot of these European varieties, the varieties that we've been very surprised that have worked are things like Chardonnay and Cabernet Franc and Riesling. Um, and then there's varieties uh, like Chamberson, Pinot Noir that we thought would do well that just haven't, haven't done as well as we thought they were going to. So it's all been part of the learning process. And I think any wine region and every winery kind of has to go through these trials to really discover what their site you know, is capable of producing. For us, the rainfall is really one of the big factors in uh, how our season goes. Depending on what the weather's doing, uh, you know, that's all going to influence the amount of trips we're going to have to make through the vineyard. Whether it's pruning or pulling leaves or spraying or cultivating, it's all going to be impacted by the weather. And then harvest as well. It's all going to depend on what the weather's doing. So to have all those tools in your toolbox, to know what to do when the weather's been hot and dry, or to know what to do when the weather's been wet and cool, uh, that's experience. And that's something that is priceless at the end of the day. Another priceless experience, Andy says, is raising a family in this way of life. Well, I often joke that this is a young person's business because one, we are farming. It is a lot of work. It's, it's a seven day a week job. Uh, it's a lot of hours. But on the other hand, uh, I hope my children really appreciate uh, the unique experience they've had growing up. My daughter, who's five, loves to be able to go out and show people, you know, her goats and things like that. I, I think they're, they're really going to cherish a lot of the experiences and memories that they'll have. Living at the winery, it is neat. You can go outside and you can see everything that you're growing and the kids enjoy that. They're living in the country. They get to ride on their dad's lap on the, the bobcat and help him do things. And I don't know if they would have gotten that experience had we lived in town. Andy and I both were raised in the country and I just don't think that we'd want anything less for our children. Like Andy and Deanna, Ohio's wine industry is still fairly young, so there are no rules or formulas yet on how to operate a successful winery. 
But Andy and Deanna's willingness to experiment and innovate has helped them succeed without a playbook. We're really trying to get involved with kind of that agritourism, agritainment kind of uh, feel. The animals are a big draw. People love the animals. Getting the musicians to play on weeknights helps draw in people for that. When I got out of ag school, you know, 12 years ago, we weren't really sure what we could grow. The thinking was it was just along the lake, just the Ohio River Valley. But as we've proven here at our location, we can grow some of these European varieties successfully. It's all about planting more grapes, learning what will work, experimenting, taking that risk to really discover you know, what can be done. I think the, the issue we have is more of a marketing issue. It's, it's more about convincing experienced wine drinkers we can grow a world-class Chardonnay. The first part of convincing wine connoisseurs, Andy believes, is getting their attention. He hopes to do that with one of his signature products, ice wine. One of the benefits of a cold Ohio winter is that we do get very cold at the right time most years. A lot of the varieties that make high quality ice wine will grow in this climate. So when we get that first cold snap that comes down out of Canada, it will freeze those grapes that we have left out in the vineyard. We can go out in the middle of the day and it'll be you know, a bone chilling 15 degrees. We can pick our grapes and bring them into the winery and press them. And it's one of those products that we can make uh, usually year in and year out, and they can't produce in California. So, you know, we sort of have a, a I guess I'll call it an advantage there. And it, it's really a marquee product that we can showcase that's unique to this region, unique to Ohio, that really gets a lot of attention, garners a lot of national press and international press and awards. Uh, it's something that's really potentially going to put us on the map here in Ohio. And we believe that the future for us is to hopefully use our ice wines to get our foot in the door to certain places and then say, you know, try our Chardonnay, try our Cabernet, you know, try some of these other wines. So really it's an, it's an opportunity for us to, to grow and showcase what we can do here in Ohio. The wine business is notoriously competitive, but if the Troutmans can turn even Ohio winters into an asset, who knows, perhaps Summit County may someday be ranked with Sonoma.